Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul and hopefully you're having an amazing day. I want to kick this video off with performance discussions of the RTX 3080 Ti and discuss whether the memory configuration of the GPU will actually bottleneck its performance compared to what we would see with an RTX 3090. As a quick reminder, the GPU is set to launch about mid-February and it's going to cost you 999 US dollars, at least according to the rumors, with the CUDA core count being identical to that of the 3090, but the main difference being the memory configuration, which we'll get more into in just a moment. But first, let's have a look at the scores. So this I find rather interesting, fascinating in fact, and it's for 3D Mark's Time Spy Extreme. Obviously this is very punishing on the GPU, and we see three cards being shown off in this graph. Credit, by the way, to Harakazi, as well as Kopity7 Kemi for this data. The RTX 3080 brings up the rear, and it scores 8,900 points, which is about on par with what you would expect with a 30. Uh, 80, I score about that with my 3080, I score between uh, 8,900 points and about 9,000 points, depending what I've got running in the background. The 3080 Ti, meanwhile, is scoring 9,200 points. Again, these are roughly estimates. And the 3090 scores uh, about 1,000 points. Well, actually, around, it is exactly 1,000 points higher, 10,200 now this is a very interesting set of performance results, I'm sure you'll agree, and definitely seems to paint an interesting picture of what we can see going on with the performance of the RTX 3080 Ti. So why are we seeing such a difference in performance? A thousand points is no laughing matter. Well, most likely there are two elements which come into it. The first is the memory bandwidth. So the RTX 3080 Ti has 760 gigabytes per second of memory bandwidth compared to 936 gigabytes per second of the RTX 3090. It is worth noting, of course, that these figures are not confirmed yet by NVIDIA, so they may change. But this is because of the fact that it A has a narrower bus, but the rumor is that we're seeing exactly the same memory type, 19 Gbps speeds, for both the RTX 3080 Ti and 3080 i.e. the 3080 and 3080 Ti have exactly the same amount of memory bandwidth, the only difference between the two cards in memory configuration is double the amount of RAM. However, the RTX 3080 Ti also has a slightly lower clock frequency with a boost clock of 60 megahertz lower. Now it is worth noting that boost clocks don't mean too much and you can easily overclock. Furthermore, you can quite happily overclock Ampere uh, memory and very frequently you can get over a gigahertz higher on the memory speeds. So what I decided to do is take a look at the RTX 3080, I threw it into my machine, and I messed around with the core clock and memory clock to see what the results were. I won't go through all of the results because, well, they're on screen, but you can indeed see that overclocking the memory alone doesn't really have that much of an advantage in times my extreme. Indeed, it seems to be extremely sensitive to core clock frequency. However, when core clock does rise, memory bandwidth also, the, the needs for memory bandwidth also rise with it. Unfortunately, we are looking at a rather large increase in the number of CUDA cores between the RTX 3080 and the RTX 3080 Ti, so most probably that's the cause here. In fact, if we look at the result 1 GHz RAM, um, 116 power limit, and 100 MHz core, which was my highest result um, with this. By the way, these are not the highest results I've ever received. My founders edition, I've scored about 9,500 points, but I've got other things open to kind of um, monitor frequencies and other things. So all of these results were taken in the same run with tons of stuff open. So the, the numbers are a little lower than what would be ideal, but it is what it is. I couldn't do a clean boot on the system that I'm running at the moment, unfortunately, for you guys, but uh, it is on a 10 900 k anyway. So anyway, I'm scoring 9,333, but if we look at the result directly below that, the stock RAM with, again, the same core overclock, we score 9,127 points. But if we mosey our way down to um, 1 gigahertz RAM, but keep the stock, but keep the actual GPU core uh, stock, 
you will notice that the result is basically the exact same as what you would get with the card running on stock. This basically means that the RTX 3080, at least in Time Spy, is not memory bandwidth um, constrained. So Nvidia didn't skimp out and run their memory speed too slow. But as you start to increase the clock frequency, it does seem that the card is very finely balanced. And we can actually see this again repeated in Gears 5. I actually think these results are slightly easier to read simply because there are smaller numbers. Maybe that's just me. But uh, the stock speed is 73 FPS. And with 1 gigahertz and the stock core, it goes up to an amazing 73.2. So that's 0.2 of a frame per second difference, which I'm sure you'll agree is, is going to really make the difference in your performance. However, when you have the RAM at stock crank, crank up the core clock as well as the power limit, it goes up to 74.1. And of course, if you overclock both RAM as well as the um, core, you get the most benefit. So my guess is that we are indeed looking at a situation where the RTX 3080 Ti is probably going to be constrained by memory bandwidth. My assumption is that we will be better off just grabbing the GPU. Of course, if you can increase the clock frequency of the GPU core, go for it. But the primary uh, thing to aim for, it would seem, is memory clock frequency. And all of my cards though, so far, which are the 3080, 3070, and 3060 Ti, I've been able to get one gigahertz more. So if we did a quick mathematics on that, that should crank us to about 800 gigabytes per second of bandwidth, depending on if you can get slightly more. On a couple of the cards, I've managed to get around 1200 megahertz. Uh, I think on one of them I got 1300, or was it 1250, something like that. Uh, on the, I think it was the 3080 that only allowed me to go to um, 1 gigahertz, and I think it was the 3070 that allowed me to crank things up higher, but obviously those are different memory modules anyway. We've got GDDR6 versus 6X. So I'm hoping that there is tons of overclockability left in the tank for the RTX 3080 Ti. Naturally, when we get hold of the card and we can kind of put it through its paces, we'll get a lot more information. Hey all, it's Paul from the future here, and given I am from the future, I bring us additional insight. That's a crappy way of me saying that I was tagged on Twitter to tell me that the RTX 3070 Ti and RTX 3080 Ti are both listed on Seasonic's power calculator. Full credit to Neo BK, by the way. I'll link, of course, his tweet uh, in the description of this video. And yeah, Seasonic make power supplies. I know that's shocking news. Do you get it? Power supply shock. I'm sorry. But... Um, Naturally, when you're building a system, you will want to know how big of a power supply you will need, whether it's 750 watt, 850, whatever. And so a lot of uh, these manufacturers have a rather handy power supply kind of calculator, which gives you a ballpark for how much juice your particular system will need. The only caveat to this is that YCry over at videocards.com has said that he believes that this news isn't new. In fact, it, um, it's been there for a couple of weeks, these listings. Now, while this is not, of course, official confirmation that these GPUs exist, in fact, it's possible that they are simply basing it on the TDP figures that have already leaked online. We'll get into the specs of the 3070 Ti in just a moment. It honestly does lend a lot of credibility to the rumours, not that they need any more credibility, because at this point, I think we know that the cards do exist, especially the 3080 Ti. Um, as for the 3070 Ti, I'll quickly touch on the specs. As you would probably imagine, it sits right between the 3080 and the 3070. The memory configuration is essentially identical to what's leaked so far. Full credit to Kobe 7 Kivi. Full credit to Kopity 7 Kimi for the specs, but it's got 10 gigabytes of GDDR6X memory. And again, of course, that's on a 320-bit bus. The only thing we're missing is the clock frequency of the memory. And the GPU is uh, sitting there with 7,424 CUDA cores. So that's uh, considerably more than the 5,888 of the 3070 but it's a nice cut as well from the RTX 
3080, which features 8704. We also don't, of course, know what the clock frequencies are for the GPU, but let's just be totally honest. We can probably guess that the base frequency is around 1400 to 1500 megahertz, like at the other two cards. And as for the boost frequency, it's not exactly rocket science to guess that it's going to be around the 1700 megahertz range. On the subject of NVIDIA as well, they have announced a special event which is going to be taking place in mid-January. On January 12th, it seems that we're going to be seeing the announcement for the mobile GPUs. It's possible we might see the RTX 3060 cards, which, as I discussed a couple of times now, have a really weird thing going on with the 12 gigabyte model having a slight edge in the number of CUDA cores, but you've got a 12 gigabyte card which I still think is absolutely baffling given the 3060 Ti only has 8 gigabytes of RAM, so NVIDIA apparently just want to confuse everybody, which I'm sure is going to be really fun to uh, kind of explain to some of my friends of like, well, why is this card the cheaper one and it's got more RAMs? So what's going on? Um, but yeah, too long didn't read. I think it's mostly going to be a mobile announcement. We've seen some benchmarks actually of the mobile GPUs from NVIDIA. I believe I've discussed them a couple of times in the channel already. TLDR, they look like they're kicking ass in productivity stuff. And naturally they will be faster as well than the RTX 20 series in games. Also, there are reports that the lower end SKUs in the 20 lineup, so that's the 2060, possibly even the 2070 have gone EOL. They're no longer in production. I don't think that's surprising given that NVIDIA are now launching the Ampere GPUs. Speaking of confusing, it seems that Intel want to up the ante, as they are going to be launching the 500 series boards in mid-January, but Rocket Lake not so much. We're still going to be waiting on that one, and it's probably in the distance somewhere. Being serious for a moment, it's probably going to be like uh, February or March. There, there are a lot of reports that are saying it's February, but I'm personally hearing March. I'm hoping it's earlier for Intel's sake. If they can get it earlier, that's obviously great news for them, given AMD's supply at the moment is, well, well, there is no supply, <laughs> essentially, especially for certain SKUs. Some of the SKUs aren't so bad with availability, like the 5600X apparently is more readily available. I haven't tried to procure one myself, but my friend is currently trying and retailers are telling him that there's going to be more stock coming in soon which I'll believe when he shows me photos of his new uh, CPU, frankly. But for Intel, the 500 series boards will indeed apparently launch the 11th. This is according to a Chinese outlet, Weizing. Hopefully I've pronounced that correctly, W-E-I-X-I-N. And uh, apparently Intel uh, partners, board partners, are going to be revealing uh, several boards which will be the Z590, B560, and finally H510. And all of this will drop on the 11th, but I know I sound like I'm repeating myself a lot here. The motherboards will launch by themselves. However, Rocket Lake itself will not launch, and so it probably won't appear until February or possibly even early March, which is kind of weird. The only good thing about it is that it does stop everyone from jumping on the board, so I guess technically speaking it could be good for supply chain and availability, maybe, but even then, you know, it's not exactly great. You can also run uh, the 500 series boards with uh, Comet Lake, so you could throw in like your 11, you know, sorry, your 10 900k if you so desired. And uh, furthermore, of course, there is forward and backwards compatibility, so Rocket Lake will work on the 400 series boards, providing that your motherboard vendor uh, does provide you a BIOS update. The final thing I would like to discuss is a piece of legislation which, if it goes through, will have interesting ramifications for product availability, at least in the UK. I don't think I need to, uh, to tell you guys that uh, scalping has just been the bane of everyone's existence. Well, I guess unless you're someone who's doing the scalping uh, throughout 2020 with it affecting console launches, GPUs, everything. But there is a motion which, if it does become law, will essentially mean that it is illegal to sell a product grossly over the MSRP on something like eBay after it launches. 
This was originally spotted by Video Games Chronicle, so full credit to them. I'll link, of course, that article in the video description. So far, it's been tabled by six Scottish National Party MPs. And after that, it has actually been backed by 21 signatures of the early day motion, anyway, has been backed by 21 signatures. But it's not yet to be discussed in Commons. The other problem is that the Conservatives, who have the actual you know, power at the moment in the UK government, have no signatures at all for their party attached to this particular, well, would-be law. Obviously, if this does come into effect, it would be brilliant, in theory, for those of us who are trying to procure this hardware, but clearly for other countries it doesn't particularly help. It could also mean some interesting things if it does come into law, like, for example, you might be asked to buy one for your friend Bill and then ship it to him in the US because it might be, in theory, the only way he can get hold of the CPU or GPU or whatever, which could be interesting from that perspective. But yeah, it's super early days at the moment, but I did want to mention it simply because, obviously, there was so much frustration at the moment with scalping. Maybe there is just a tiny bit of a light at the end of the tunnel. Yeah, I don't think so, whatever. Anyway, thank you very much, guys, for watching the video. If you have enjoyed it, of course, subscribe to the channel and also ring the bell icon because the bell icon is life on YouTube. And I thank you very much for checking out the video. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.